For this week's vocabulary, we're going to be looking at plot as well as literary elements, things that come up in stories. Let's go ahead and begin with our 10 words and their definitions. Term number one is going to be plot. Two is pronounced setting. Three is exposition. Four is rising action. Five is climax. Six is falling action. Seven is resolution. Eight is character. Nine is protagonist and 10 is antagonist. Let's go ahead and get started with number one, plot. The definition is that a plot is the story that is told as in a novel, play, movie, etc. Think of the plot as the backbone of a story. It's the organized pattern or sequence of events that make up the story from start to finish. Everything that happens in a story from the beginning to the end is part of the plot. Term number two is setting. It's the context and environment in which something is situated. So think of the setting when you think of it, it describes where and when the story takes place. The setting can shape the mood of the story and influence the actions of characters. It's the backdrop of the story. It's the environment where it takes place and the time period all rolled up into one thing. Term number three is exposition. If you've looked at the plot diagram before, this is gonna be at the very beginning of it. Exposition is the account that sets forth the intent of the story, or to break it down a little bit further, it's the groundwork of the story. It introduces us to the characters, the setting and the basic situation or conflict, the problem that the characters are going to have in the story. It sets the stage, helping us understand the world that we're diving into. After the exposition, you come to term number four, rising action. And this is a series of plot events that build up towards the climax. Here, the tension and excitement build up. This is where the story starts to get exciting. This is usually where people who are reading books tend to get hooked into them. Challenges, conflicts, and complications begin to arise here, pushing the characters and the story forward and drawing us as the audience in deeper. Term number five is the climax of the story. If you've looked at the plot diagram before, this is usually going to be at the very tip top of it. And this is the decisive moment in a novel or play. This is the pivotal moment in the story, the highest point of tension that the story is going to have. It's where the main conflict reaches its peak and the outcome becomes clear. Things won't be the same after this point in the story. Term number six, the falling action, comes after the climax, and it's a series of plot events that follow the climax of a narrative or a story. To break it down, the falling action comes after the climax's intensity, and this phase of the story eases us towards the end. It's where the aftermath of the climax plays out, and the pieces start to fall into place. If you've been following some kind of mystery in the story or multiple mysteries, they may start to be solved in this part of the plot. Term number seven is the resolution, and this is the way the main complication of a literary work is settled. Here the story wraps up, we put a bow on it. It's the point where all remaining questions get answered, conflicts are resolved, and we get a sense of closure. We find out what happens to the characters after the main events, sometimes what happens to them for the rest of their life, or sometimes we're left with a cliffhanger wondering what would happen next to them. Usually, things are resolved here. Speaking of characters, term number eight is character, and that's an imaginary person represented in a work of fiction. These are the individuals in the story. They could be people, animals, mythical creatures. It doesn't matter as long as they're the things or people you're following in a work of fiction. Each has their own personality, desires, and challenges. They're who we root for, relate to, or even sometimes dislike. And usually the better the author, the better the characters you're going to have in a story. The more believable, the more likable, or even sometimes dislikable they're going to be. Number nine is protagonist. This is the principal character in a work of fiction. This is typically the main character or the central figure in a story. We usually follow their journey, their struggles, and growth most closely. They drive the story forward and face the primary conflict or challenge. They're almost always the good guy that we follow in the story, and I use that as a very general term, just the person that we're rooting for. But it doesn't always have to be somebody who's perfect. Most of the times the protagonist does have some flaws that they work through in the course of a story. 
Term number 10 is the antagonist, and this is someone who offers opposition. You can't have more than one antagonist in a story as well. This is the force or character that opposes the protagonist. It doesn't always have to be a person. It could be nature, society, or even the protagonist's inner demons. And by that, we mean some inner problems that they have, some things that they're trying to work through, some problems that they're going to get rid of. The antagonist presents obstacles and challenges for the main character. Those are our 10 words and definitions for this week. Try to align them with things that you're learning about with plot, like the plot diagram, and you'll successfully have the knowledge you need to know everything you need to know about how stories are structured.